Imagine achieving anything you want in life, and all it takes for you is to change the way you perceive life. Wouldn't that be awesome? My name is Terence, and today I want to share with you an idea that fundamentally transformed my life, and maybe soon yours too. But first, let me go through my backstory, my struggles, my breakthroughs. As a shy kid, I struggled finding my path. Being the first in my extended family to go to college, I didn't have anyone to look up to. My parents came from a culturally different background. And you know what the biggest challenge was? Rejection. There was a constant feeling of being reject rejected and turned down, and every single rejection hurts my confidence. And I was even so scared in school, so that I'd even dare to raise my hands, which I can do right now, because I was so afraid of making mistakes and looking like a fool. And the, sheer, the mere idea of standing here in front of a crowd like this, horrifying. But you know what? I decided to change my life fundamentally. I was so tired of being afraid, of not taking action, so I needed a new identity. Over the past decade, I have immersed myself in numerous projects, such as founding new startups, to volunteering in clubs, to completing my masters, to making music, and now working on the cutting edge of Web3 and AI. And let me tell you, it hasn't been easy, but somehow it paid off. Through it all, I managed to create several successful projects, and it even earned a spot on the Forbes 30 on the 30 list. So how did I achieve all of this? I'm going to share that with you in the next minutes. So let me start with the three fundamental uh, limiting beliefs that hold us back. Fear, doubt, and shame. <laughs> Fear, doubt, and shame. So these three things are like a brick wall that stands between us and the life we want, trapping us in the old patterns. And it manifests in three different ways. First up, we have the stuck in a the rut. These people don't know what they want. And they're so overwhelmed by the sheer amount of possibilities so that they don't even get into taking action. Their lives are comfortable, so they live a comfortable life and there's no reason for them to change. Second of all, oh, yeah. <laughs> Second of all, we have the dreamers. They know what they want, but they struggle to take action because in their heads, they need to have the perfect plan, the perfect idea, the perfect execution. Everything needs to be perfect, so they struggle to handle the pressure. And as a result, they procrastinate. And last but not least, we have the quitters. They start off with enthusiasm, but as soon as they stumbled upon the first obstacle, they give up. Why? Because they feel so ashamed of their perception and it's easier to give up than to feel ashamed. Do you find yourself in one of these situations? Believe it or not, I found myself in each of the situations over and over again. I was a quitter, I was a dreamer, and I, was, I also was stuck in a rut. But what changed for me, especially when I was stuck in a rut, is when I went to a business school, and there I volunteered for 10 different student associations, including founding my own NGO, and organizing a TED event like this. It was awesome. In this safe environment, I learned what I like, and also got skilled in multiple areas. And that was really great, because by chance, I discovered my passion for entrepreneurship, and that kicked off my journey at age 19. I was also a dreamer. I was amazed by the TED speakers. And I thought they were born with a natural gift for public speaking. So I wanted to be a good public speaker as well, but I didn't know how to get started. So something then clicked. Through entrepreneurship, business competitions, hackathons, I had no other choice than to get good at pitching. 
and I had to face my fears head on and to embrace the messiness in the beginning. You know what? It somehow worked because the first feedback hurt and the second one as well. But I kept pushing and pushing and practicing. At some point, I can even stand in front of you and in front of other people as well. I was a quitter. You know, we all have been there, pouring our heart, sweat, and tears into something only to watch it fail. That can be a date, that can be a job interview. In my case, it was my startup, and I worked really hard on it. I failed to fundraise for my startup because investors backed out with the promised amount of money when the market crashed. So I felt ashamed. I felt sad. And I just wanted to give up. When I hit rock bottom, I remember myself to zoom out. Because one failure doesn't define me. Rejections don't matter if you keep trying and trying and trying. And every single time, when you try again, each attempt becomes less significant. So I then pivoted my startup. In 2018, I did an exchange, an MBA exchange program in the sunny California. Silicon Valley mantra is all about let's fail more to be more innovative. And the truth is, who really wants to fail? Because failing it's like having paper cuts on your finger. They might be small, but they sting like hell. So what's the solution? Here's how to reframe it. It's not a failure. It's an experiment. Every single time when you go outside of your comfort zone, that can be a moment of experiment. And life becomes a series of experiments. Instead of assuming what will happen, dive into the unknown and see what unfolds. Now, picture yourself as a scientist. Lab coat and goggles and everything. You know, the job of a scientist is to conduct experiments. So scientists aren't fixated on the outcomes. They don't get upset if the experiment failed because it doesn't reflect their ability nor self-worth. And they don't stop after one or two attempts, because it's their job to experiment and to gather valuable data for the next steps. So this concept might be simple, but how do you put it into action? Malcolm Gladwell created the famous 10,000 hours rule. So that means in order to be really good at something, you need to spend 10,000 hours on it. And I have created my own rule which is the 10 times rule for experimentation. So tell yourself, no matter what, I'm going to try this 10 times anyway. So instead of writing one short story and expecting it to be a, whole, uh, a bestseller, write 10. Instead of building one startup and expecting it to be the next unicorn, the next big thing, build 10. And instead of going on one date and expecting to meet the significant other, go on 10 dates, and maybe it takes less 10 dates to find a significant other. And you might ask Terence, why 10 times? It's obvious, because we have 10 fingers, so you can count each experiment. You know, I personally have religiously followed the 10 times experimentation rule, because I have participated in 10 hackathons, or actually eight hackathons, have undertaken seven entrepreneurial ventures, and even this talk has gone through 10 iterations. The last iteration was last time, so I created the last script yesterday. <laughs> and because I know that with quantity, there comes quality. The first experiment might be bad, the second as well, but the third one might get better, and each experiment is a stepping stone to greatness. After 10 experiments, I am great. And by the way, I did manage to win five out of eight hackathons, won a couple of different business competitions, landed a few jobs in big companies. But the most important thing is really, you get better at your craft. You get better at pitching. You get better at negotiation. You get better at anything you want, but only if you are willing 
to start from ground zero first. And guess what? You have already done this process of experimentation. Think back of when you learned how to walk. How did you learn to walk? You start walking, and then you stumbled and fell and stumbled and fell, and it continued, and you persevered. Otherwise, you won't be walking today, right? And interestingly, we all used to be little scientists as kids, exploring and trying new things, even eating dirt. <laughs> but somewhere along the way, many of us lost that innate ability. And as we age, we tend to make more excuses and let fears hold us back. So let me tell you about other experiments that have changed my life. I was chronically afraid of height. But in 2016, I was standing on one of the tallest towers in the world, the CN Tower, and I asked myself, what would actually happen if I did a handstand there? So I looked down, and when I looked down, I just froze. You know, it's 500 meters away from the ground, and it's a glass that is between us. It was frightening, but I did it somehow. And, and the miraculous thing is, that after that, I became less and less afraid of height. I can't really explain it, but it worked. Another story. Oh yeah, that's a picture of me doing this handstand. Another story. I'm a self-taught dancer, so I would go on YouTube, watch some how some people are dancing, doing some moves, and <laughs> it's great, right? So you, you can practice in front of the mirror. But let's take a look at what I did on my birthday recently. I wanted to try something new on my birthday. So I asked these guys whether I could join them, and they said yes. I was so scared, but I still did it. So happy that I managed it. So I was really happy that I actually have done it. Because here's the thing, there's a difference between practicing in front of the mirror and practicing in front of many people on the street. It's a totally different experience, especially when you're self-taught. So the 10 times experimentation rule may not be some hocus pocus, but it has indeed transformed my life. No longer am I that shy kid with no direction. And no matter where you are in your journey, whether you're 19 or 50, if you think you're stuck in a rut, a dreamer or a quitter, embrace life as a series of experiments and break free from old patterns. Everything you want in life is just 10 experiments away. That's right, 10 experiments away and you have the power to change your life. And now let's do a practical exercise together. It only takes 30 seconds. So close your eyes and think of an area in your life that needs more attention, be it personal, professional, health or family related. Got it? Now imagine feeling like a total rock star in that area, all because you took that first step and started experimenting today. By the way, you can open your eyes again. Congrats, you're one step closer to your goal. So next time when you ask yourself, should I move to a different city? Should I leave my corporate job? Should I ask that special person out? The answer is, why not? It's just an experiment. So start your little experiment today, and remember, do it 10 times. <laughs>